going to make a blanket stitched animal right now. I have here um, the pattern that I used for a dolphin and I doubled over my piece of felt, pinned it down and cut around the pattern. Now I have two of them. What I want to show you is that the first thing that you're going to do when you start doing this project is you're going to decorate, I call it, both sides. So I'm going to take away the pattern piece and I'm going to show you we have two sides. Now, we don't want what we don't want to do is put the uh, embellishments on this way and this way because you see what's going to happen when you sew them together then one side the embellishment is going to be on the inside of the animal so make sure when you have anything that's a profile that you put them mirror images together before you do the decoration so first thing I'm going to do is I want to sew on the eyes because the requirement is that you need to use two buttons you can either use um, the buttons as decorative buttons on your animal or you can use them as like I'm going to do the eyes and how I'm going to do it is I'm going to just go ahead and mark my felt like this I have a little uh, a little hole right here from the needle and I'm going to hold my finger right there I'm going to bring my thread up pull it all the way and I've got my buttons right here so I'm going to take the buttons and I'm going to sew them on and when you sew on a button you always go um, through the circuit at least twice if you feel like you can and you have enough room to fit your needle down through the eye of the button you can even go through a third time I'm going to go through it twice I'm going to turn it over and do my finishing knot. I'm going to go through the last stitch or part of the thread, whichever I can get, and I'm going to go through the loop, pull it nice and tight, and I'm going to repeat in the exact same spot. So through a stitch, through a loop, the loop, pull it tight. Now I have the one button sewn on. Now I want to do, I want to find the other button. So I'm going to use my same pattern piece. I'm going to get another knot at the end of my thread. And I'm going to now, I'm just going to come right up here. And now I know where to put my button. I'm going to take my other button, put it on. I'm going to come up from the back, leave my knot on the back side or the wrong side it's called. And I'm going to sew my button on, up, down, down and then I'm going to make a double knot on the back flip it over go through the last stitch go through the loop pull nice and tight repeat Now, here's the next thing. You need to do some embellishments. That's not enough to get you a good grade on this project. You're gonna have to do more. So here's one suggestion that I have. You can actually cut off pieces of that paper pattern and use them as patterns for a contrasting color. So this piece is gonna go like this, and this piece Is going to go let's see this piece let's let me double check it this piece goes like this oh, I'll put it right here it's gonna go like this okay so that's the underbelly of the dolphin now I don't really need this pattern piece anymore so I'll take that away but these are the important ones so what I'm gonna do is take um, a contrasting fabric. I have this picked out right here and I'm going to need to make two of these and two of these because I want to make sure that I put it on the front of the dolphin and the back side of the dolphin. So I'm going to fold this over. I'm just going to fold this over right like this. I'm going to take this piece. I'm going to pin it down 
and now I'm going to cut it out so that I'm cutting it out twice. this is my scrap I would use them both the same on the same from the same piece of fabric only because you want it to look like it's an underbelly and it's that it goes underneath of the um, the fin right there so I'm going to cut this out and I have my two pieces I'm going to put them right like, let me remember how this went, like that. Okay, so the fin is supposed to look like it's going over top of the belly, the underbelly. Okay, those are my two pieces. So I'm going to take my thread and I've decided I'm going to use the black thread to sew this on. I want to pin everything down so I don't lose it. Okay, so I'm putting a pin here. I'm going to put a pin here. Pin right here. Remember when you pin, you can't pin like that. That's not pinning. Okay, you've got to push the pin in and push the pin out. All right, so I'm going to start off by um, doing a demonstration on how to sew this piece on using the blanket stitch. So I'm going to come up from the back side to leave my knot on the back and I'm going to go down through the blue, up through the gray, and when the loop starts to close, I'm going to go up through the loop. Okay, down through the blue, up through the gray, up through the loop. Turning the corner down through the blue, up through the gray, up through the loop. Take out the pin. I'm making sure that the edges are together right here. I want to show you, you don't have to sew around the bottom edge right now because when you sew around the whole entire edge of the animal, that's when you're going to be closing it up. That's when you're going to be sewing along that bottom edge. So there's no reason to do it twice. It would look pretty bad if you, if you went around this whole piece and then you had to go around the bottom again when you sewed the front to the back. Take it to the back, turn it over, look for the closest stitch, there it is, go through the stitch, go through the loop, that's one stitch, and I want to do the second stitch right on top of it, there we go. Like I say, just, just leave this bottom part alone for now. Over here, I'm going to start this one. Go down. I want it to look like it's really starting at the beginning. So I don't, I want to take that first stitch pretty close to the edge. When you've done maybe about, I don't know, five stitches or so, then you can take out that pin. I'm 
And remember, don't get the end of the thread caught in these stitches. I just shortened up my end so that wouldn't happen. Okay, all right, so for all practical purposes and to cut down the time of this video, we're gonna now assume that I did the same thing over here. So you'd be sewing on the front and the back before you connect the front to the back. So this is the point now that I would be closing it up. So we're just gonna pretend that I've got the, um, that I've already got the, uh, those embellishments on the other side. So the point is that whatever you're doing, you've gotta do all the embellishments on the front and the back before you do this is the final step, and that's closing it up, sewing it around the edges. So I'm gonna quickly go around the edges, but there's two important things that I wanna show you. And um, the most important part of doing this project and doing it neatly is that you don't let any of the knots or the ends show and that's what you'll be grading, graded on too. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold this together with a couple of pins, line it up, hold it together. And I think I'm going to start sewing it right here. This is a good spot for me to start. So when you start to close it up, you wanna start with the needle coming from the inside. Okay, I'm gonna pull the thread till the knot stays on the inside. You don't want that to show. Stuff the ends down inside so they don't pop out and show. And then you're gonna go, like you did with the pouch, you're gonna go through both layers and through the loop. And you're gonna do it nice and even and tight as you go all around the edge. And when you do something like a curve like this, um, add a, a little bit, like maybe an extra stitch or two, so that it doesn't look like it's pulled and curved around the, the, um, the curve. You want to make sure that it lies nice and flat. So stick maybe one extra stitch in there than you normally would if it was a straight edge. And when you do something that is, that's supposed to have a shape to it, it's good to overemphasize it. So right here where there's a, where it is a cut in for the tail, I'm gonna go in a little bit deeper. Just to give it more definition. And I'm, making my stitches nice and close together and I'm pulling pretty tightly because what you're gonna do right before you finish sewing it all the way around is you're gonna put that stuffing in and that's that white fluffy stuff. It's called polyester fiber fill and that's what I gave you in your uh, materials bag. So you wanna make the stitches nice and tight so that the stuffing doesn't poke out around the edges or 
through the edges, I should say. And when I get over here, where I get to the underbelly, when I sew it, I've gotta make sure that I've got all four layers included, right? Because I have the gray layer, then I have the blue, then I have another blue, then I have another gray. So I've gotta go through everything. The needle gets stuck, just keep pulling. Okay, so here's the four layers. I've got the gray, I've got two blues, and I've got another gray. And so usually when you, when you um, thread a needle and you're gonna be using it for something like this, you should never have more than about, I'd say about 30 inches, 35 inches on your needle because it's sure to get into a big knot unless you're really careful with it. You go very slow. So don't take a whole skein of embroidery floss to pile it onto the needle thinking you're gonna need all that because chances are it's gonna end up in a knot. So be very careful with it. Um, so what happens if you don't put enough thread on the needle? Well, then you're gonna run out and that's what's gonna happen most likely because you're not gonna be able to get around the whole thing with one uh, threading of the needle which that's fine so what you're gonna do is you're gonna make a finishing knot and you're gonna take it and you're gonna pull the end of the thread on the inside of the animal so in just a moment I'm gonna show you what that looks like what I mean so I'm gonna keep going making sure that I'm picking up the gray from the other side And now I'm back down to just the two pieces for his fin. So as much as I would call this a, a three-dimensional piece of art that you're doing, I would also say it's more two-dimensional because there's just a front and a back. We're not talking about any depth or any sides to it. It's just a front and a back sewn together. So for this project, that's really all that you need. Sometimes maybe when you get more advanced, you'll have something that would have like um, another dimension to it, like uh, some depth to it. Um, those are quite difficult for a beginner to do, to match up all of the pieces. It's like a big puzzle. Okay, I, I've got plenty of thread here, but let's pretend I'm running low. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get to a spot where it's not gonna be real noticeable. And I'm gonna say right here is a pretty good spot for me. And I'm gonna take my last stitch. Now I'm gonna go, let me get one more little stitch in here because it's a crevice that goes in. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a knot. So I'm gonna go through the last stitch and through the loop and I'm gonna do it, mm, well, I'm gonna do it one more time because I really want this knot to be holding. Now, here's the part that I want you to pay attention to. Take this thread, go inside the animal with your needle and take it and come out anywhere, okay? See what I did? I came out anywhere. Now, you're gonna give it a little pull. I'm just pulling this thread. I want you to see it and I'm cutting it off. And now, that end of the thread is gonna stay on the inside of the animal. I don't wanna see that end. I don't wanna see the knot. It's gonna stay in there. Now, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna go around the whole thing. And just before you get over here, you're gonna stop sewing. You're gonna take the fiber fill, which looks like this. And you're gonna stuff it. So you're gonna stuff it really well. And then after you're all done and it's fully stuffed, then you're gonna finish sewing up the last bit. And what do you do with the end? You make a double knot and you take your needle and you go through it and you come out anywhere. 
because that's how the end of your thread is gonna be staying in there and then you cut it off. Okay, so let me show you a few samples of some things that have been made. So now I've sewn around the top of the animal and I've put the stuffing inside. So I've stuffed it and what I've had to do if I wanted to get it into narrow spaces is I use the uh, eraser end of a, a pencil and I pushed it along. Don't use a pen or anything sharp. You don't want to poke right through it. And now what I'm going to do is close up and show you what to do with the end of the thread so that you don't see it. Like I mentioned before, when you go to, to end a thread because you're running short on thread, you have to make sure that you don't see the end of it. So you go to, sort of go through, after you make your finishing knot, you go through the fabric and you bring your needle out anywhere in order to cut it off and then just um, bury your end. So I'm going to go like this and finish it up. And I'm going to go right in here and I'm going to make sure that I get all the way to meet up with my other thread. And I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, now finish this off. I'm going to do um, the finishing knot right here. So I'm going through the last stitch. And then I'm giving it a tight pull. Go through the loop. And then I'm going to repeat. Go through the last stitch and go through the loop. Now I've got it nice and tight. I'm going to take my needle and go right back down right where that knot is. And I'm going to go along and I'm going to push that needle through. I'm going to pull it out and I'm going to pull it and give it a clip. I don't have my sinew in front of me so I can't, but when you give it a snip right there, the end will just stay on the inside. That's how you finish it off. Now when I sewed it, I did the blanket stitch. I left a little bit of an opening and I put some stuffing in here. As you can see from the side, it sticks, it's, it's raised, and I wanted it to have some depth to it. So you can you can use stuffing like that if you if you have like an extra thing that you want to put some stuffing in, a belly, a nose, whatever you want, you can use it like that too. Okay, so this was a pretty simple one. You've got it too. You can make buttons on them, you can put a little pair of pants on them, you can put a vest, whatever you can come up with. I want to see your creativity not mine, I want to see what you can do. And like I say, you can cut this bigger, you can cut the nose bigger, whatever you want. Okay, so another thing is, here's something. So here's a bunny, and just to show you that you have to sew everything on for the front and the back before you close up the sides. And remember, the requirement is you need to use two buttons. So you can use the buttons as eyes, or if you want to use them as buttons down his shirt, or whatever you want to do is fine, polka dots. Um, but remember, you've got to do the front and the back, and the last step is to go around the edge. Also, if you're doing something like this, this right here, these ears, the inside of the ears are kind of large, and I say that because when I would start to sew around the edge here, these stitches, these continuation of these stitches, is going to get overlapped with this. So my recommendation, if you're going to do something like this on an animal, cut the inner ear very small, much smaller than this, okay? I also padded the tummy, so I did the same technique that I did on the bear. I sewed around almost the whole thing, put the stuffing in, and then I closed it up and remembering to get all of the ends and the knots on the inside. See this? It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter. You're going to have it inside the animal. All right, let me just show you some other ones. Here's another one. This is, um, I don't know, I guess it's an octopus. So uh, all of the features were sewn on first before the whole thing was sewn up. And it's a little bit tricky to do something like this because you really can't get all the stuffing into all the legs. What you could do is you could take uh, the eraser end of a pencil and you could stuff it down if you wanted to. I didn't do it on this one. Okay, here's another one. This is a, a turtle. And what I did with this one was, um, it was printed like that and I just cut apart the paper pattern and I just cut each segment out of the paper pattern and I use them for the patterns for all different kinds of different colors of fabric. 
so I sewed the whole part on here first before I put the back to it. Alligator. Okay, same thing. I sewed the front, all of the embellishments. I sewed the underside, all of the embellishments. Then I went around the outside edge making sure that no knots or thread ends were showing. This one, one of my students made, and she gave it to me. I thought it was awfully cute. Um, so this is some really nice imagination that I see here. She made a coat. She put a little part on the back of the coat, made a beret. So I'm going to let you do whatever your heart desires as far as embellishments go. I want to see what you can do. Okay, so good luck, and uh, uh, I'm sure you're going to do great. I can't wait to see the outcome bear that I showed you before and what I did when I made the bear I wanted this muzzle to be bigger so I used I actually used this pattern and I cut out an oval that was as big as I wanted it then I took a piece of fabric a scrap piece of white fabric and I just pinned it down and cut it around now when I sewed it I did the blanket stitch I left a little bit of an opening and I put some stuffing in here because you can see from the side sticks it's it's raised and I wanted it to have some depth to it so you can you can use stuffing like that if you if you have like an extra thing that you want to put some stuffing in a belly a nose whatever you want you can use it like that too okay so this was a pretty simple one you've got it too you can make buttons on them you can put a little pair of pants on them you can put a vest whatever you can come up with I want to see your creativity not mine I want to see what you can do and like I say you can cut this bigger you can cut the nose bigger whatever you want okay so another thing is here's something so here's a bunny and just to show you that you have to sew everything on for the front and the back before you close up the sides and remember the requirement is you need to use two buttons so you can use the buttons as eyes or if you want to use them as buttons down a shirt or whatever you want to do is fine, polka dots. Um, but remember, you've got to do the front and the back and the last step is to go around the edge. Also, if you're doing something like this, this right here, these ears, the inside of the ears are kind of large. And I say that because when I would start to sew around the edge here, these stitches, these continuation of these stitches, is gonna get overlapped with this. So my recommendation, if you're gonna do something like this on an animal, cut the inner ear very small, much smaller than this, okay? I also padded the tummy, so I did the same technique that I did on the bear. I sewed around almost the whole thing, put the stuffing in, and then I closed it up, and remembering to get all of the ends and the knots on the inside. See this? It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter. You're gonna have it inside the animal. Right, let me just show you some other ones. Here's another one. This is, um, I don't know, I guess it's an octopus. So uh, all of the features were sewn on first before the whole thing was sewn up. And it's a little bit tricky to do something like this because you really can't get all the stuffing into all the legs. What you could do is you could take uh, the eraser end of a pencil and you could stuff it down if you wanted to. I didn't do it on this one. Okay, here's another one. This is a, a turtle, and what I did with this one was, um, it was printed like that, and I just cut apart the paper pattern, and I just cut each segment out of the paper pattern, and I used them for the patterns for all different kinds of different colors of fabric. So I sewed the whole part on here first before I put the back to it. Alligator. Okay, same thing. I sewed the front, all of the embellishments, so the underside, all of the embellishments. Then I went around the outside edge making sure that no knots or thread ends were showing. This one, one of my students made, and she gave it to me. I thought it was awfully cute. Um, so this is some really nice imagination that I see here. She made a coat. She put a little part on the back of the coat, made a beret. So I'm going to let you do whatever your heart desires as far as embellishments go. I want to see what you can do. Okay, so good luck, and uh, uh, I'm sure you're gonna do great. I can't wait to see the outcome.